Hello everyone and welcome to a DCS training series for the A10C2 tank killer module. So I've had some good feedback from the tutorials that I've been doing on Enigma's Cold War server and thought I'd do a proper tutorial series for a plane and I'm going to do the plane that I have the most experience in, uh, the one that I find the most fun, that's the A10C and particularly this is going to be aimed at the A10C2 tank killer upgrade. A lot of what I say is going to still apply to the legacy A10C version. Uh, there are going to be some differences here and there. I'll try and highlight those as I go. I'm also going to do this series in a slightly different order from a lot of the tutorial series I see online. And the reason for that is I really want to get the fun parts up front as quick as possible. I want to get people able to fly the ATEM, do some fun, do some damage, blow up some things, especially during sort of say a two week uh, trial period. And so I will certainly be doing things like cold starts and takeoff tutorials a little bit later. But for now, I'm going to be focusing on as quickly as possible getting you into the plane and doing damage. That said, there is going to need to be some sort of housekeeping. There's some setup we have to do, and I'll try and get all of that done and dusted in this first tutorial. So here we're going to be focusing on the control setup and then just some general overviews to get your head around the interface of the A10. So first things first, want to set up the controls so we'll go to the settings go to controls and as I said focusing on the A10C2 and I'm going to be dividing controls into different categories depending on how important it is that you bind them because I know the A10 has a lot of HOTAS controls and not everyone has a HOTAS controller with a whole load of buttons on. Let's start with the critical controls, the ones you desperately need on your stick. You really can't get away with having anywhere else. So first up, the gun trigger. So this is a two-stage gun trigger that we have the option for here. Uh, if you do have a two-stage trigger, it is well worth binding both of these. If you only have a one-stage trigger, that's no problem. Uh, just skip the first stage and just bind gun trigger in all modes that fires the A10's uh, GAU-8 gun. The first stage, as we'll see in a future tutorial, uh, just ground stabilizers. It's so nice to have, but not very important. Second thing we want is the HOTAS master mode control button. This lets you switch between your weapon modes from guns to ground attack, uh, CCP, CCIP and nav modes really very useful and you want to be able to do this on the fly if you want to quickly switch to say a guns pass. Equally vital is the weapon release. Uh, this is for firing anything that is not the GAU-8 gun, so all bombs, all rockets, the Mavericks, everything like that. Definitely need that one bound. Now the a has a lot of four-way hack controls. Some of these are critically important for you some are less important and we'll go through the three that I think are really vital to have on some kind of HOTAS control. The first is the coolie switch. So this is HOTAS coolie switch down, left, right and up. These as we'll see in the second half of this video let you switch between what sensor is currently active. You want to be able to do this on the fly, you want to be able to do this very quickly and so these are very, very important controls. Second one of the HOTAS DMS switch. And again, you've got aft, forward, left, and right. These change their function, but sort of globally, this is to select things. Very useful for if you want to be able to say, select weapons uh, as you go in. And the third set of hat switches I'd say is really vital is the TMS switches. Again, these have various modes, most importantly, these let you designate targets. Again, we've got aft, forward, left, and right. Another thing that's vitally important is the HOTAS slew control. Very similar to the TDC on, say, an F-18, 
Uh, this will pan whatever active sensor you've got around. I have these set to a axis on a small uh, mini stick on the back of my HOTAS, or you can equally bind them to uh, buttons, HOTAS slew down, left, right, and up. And lastly, of the things that you probably really want bound, this one I'm dithering between it being critical and just really useful, and that's the nose wheel steering button doesn't sound useful but that is also the laser designator switch button so again really useful for being able to laser targets i'd say this is critical but if you need to drop any of these i'd go for that so now let's move on to the important controls the ones you can probably get away with having on the keyboard uh, but still definitely these are controls that you do want to know what they are so you can get to them in a hurry now if uh, continue with the hat switches here. I'll go for the trim. Trim nose down, up, left, and right. Self-explanatory if you've flown any planes. These are aileron left and right. The reason why I say these are not too critical is the A-10 is a pretty good aircraft. It can still fly even if you've got not got it very, very nicely uh, trimmed. So I wouldn't say this is mandatory to have very available. You can probably get away with having this on your keyboard and just take time every now and then to retrim. Still, if you can, I'd put these onto a four-way controller. Also along those lines is the HOTAS CMS switch. This is another four-way controller. These are your countermeasures. Uh, these are kind of a mixed bag. Countermeasure forward and aft you probably want these definitely bound to something available. You can get away without having left, right, and the Z axis, which is the push down version. These control your countermeasures. We'll go through those later, but forward and aft are what control uh, flares. So these are the two you desperately want bound. The rest of these you can get away with leaving on the keyboard. And on the A10, we've also got some switches with rather strange names that are useful for binding. First one is the HOTAS boat switch. This has three different positions, aft, center, and forward. If you've got this on an actual switch, uh, you want to uh, have these aft to center, forward to center. If you're putting these on separate buttons, aft, center, and forward is what you want. Similarly, we've got the HOTAS China hat switch and you'd want forward and aft. These have various different uh, meanings as we go on, but you definitely want to know what both of these are. Broadly, the boat control changes the IR uh, sensor mode. Uh, the China hat helps you designate targets or slew to targets. In that same area, you also want to have the speed break, ideally. So you want aft, you can also think about as a deploy speed break, that is a held button and forward is a toggle, which puts the speed break away. And then lastly, we have the things that you might want to buy into the HOTAS. Uh, they're nice to have on the HOTAS, but you can absolutely use them on the keyboard. One of these is the last of the four-way hat switches. This is the HOTAS mic switch. And so again, you've got down, forward, up, and aft. Uh, you can absolutely get away with using the keyboard for these. These are just the different radio modes. HOTAS switch up has no functions, so you can ignore that entirely. Equally flaps, these have three positions. You've got up, down, and center. Again, it might seem a bit surprising saying this is a nice have instead of a mandatory, but for the A10, I very rarely end up using flaps, certainly not uh, very often in combat. Uh, they certainly can be useful, but for the most part you don't really need them. You can absolutely take off and land without flaps. So if these are on the keyboard, that's absolutely fine. Very similarly is the gear, gear up, down. Again, nice to have if you can press it quickly, but no problem at all if it's on the keyboard. Autopilot is again pretty useful. We've got different autopilot modes and they are all LAAP. So you've got engage, disengage, and then you've got... Uh, these various switches as to alt, alt heading, and path. Again, we'll look at the functions of those. Nice to have, definitely not required. And the final bit of binding uh, to talk about is if you do have a HOTAS that you have managed to bind all of these keys to, 
so that you're not using any of the letter keys on the keyboard, one thing that is really useful is to go through this and bind the CDU keys. The CDU, as we'll see, is a data entry computer, and this is a little keyboard you've got to the side. And it's really handy if you have all of the main keys here, all of the letter keys and number keys, bound to the corresponding things on your keyboard. So I've gone through this with everything. By default, this is left control, left window, and then the letter. I've just gone and bound all of these to the letter. And equally for the number keys, I've bound all of these to the numpad. Still gives me the numbers running along the top of my keyboard in order to have other functions. Uh, but this makes entering things like target coordinates really quick. Equally, I've put in back uh, space there. Because again, really easy to make a mistake. Nice to be able to just quickly go backspace rather than having to click buttons. So yeah, rather a lot of buttons, especially compared to some modules. Either way, what I'd say is write down somewhere, find a page of notes of what you've bound everything with, because it's very easy to get confused early on. Eventually you'll get muscle memory, but that's really one of the hardest parts is remembering what all of those uh, controls are. Okay, so for the second part, uh, let's have a look at the general concept of how to fly and control the A10. Just to get a lot of this out of the way, so in the future lessons it's going to be nice and quick, uh, just running straight into various weapons. So the A10C2 module has four uh, main sensors. You've got your HUD up front, you've got your left and right multi-function color displays, or MFCDs, and you've got your head mounted uh, controller. This by default disappears if you're not, uh, if you're looking at the front, but will appear whenever you're looking off to the side. You can control all of these independently and several have multiple functions. So one of the main concepts of flying the A10C is the idea of which sensor is the sensor of interest or SOI. That is the one that all of your controls are going to be routed to. You can think of that as your active set of controls. Very similar to the F18 if you've played that module. So right now I have a little asterisk on my HUD. That indicates that the HUD is currently SOI. And so if, for example, I use my slew controls, I will move the target designator on the HUD. Again, we'll go through all of this in more detail later. Equally, I can do things like change the waypoint when the HUD is SOI. Down here I've got my two controllers, my left and right MFCDs. I can interact with these either using the HOTAS or using the various push buttons around the outside. So on my left MSCD, this has the tactical awareness display, sort of top-down map. The DSMS, our data management system. Load page, which you use during aircraft startup. And the Maverick page. And as we can see here, I can change between these modes by clicking the USB at the bottom. USB being these little buttons. On my right MFCD, I've got my targeting pod, TGP. Status page is used for setting various bits and bobs up. CDU, which is this little computer down here that I mentioned in the control section. There's a little keyboard. And your messages. Let's say I want to set something else as SOI. For example, let's say I want to control my Mac display here. Well, to do that, we use the Cooley switch. So your HOTAS Cooley switch. And an important concept in the A10 is the difference between short and long commands. Short commands are when you press and immediately release. Long commands are when you press and hold for one second. So for example here, if I press Cooley left, short, it will cycle between the various functions of the left MFCD. So press left short once, goes to the MAV page, goes load, go DSMS back to TAD. And that can be quite useful and it will always cycle in the direction that you're pushing. So 
the left MSCD, it will move to the left in steps. If I want to make this soy, I press and hold coolie left. You can see here that the uh, not soy message has disappeared. And we've got a green box inscribing the outside of this, meaning that this is now soy. Now, for example, if I use my SLU controller, it's moving the target designator there. Equally, if I use my DMS switch, instead of changing waypoint, I change the zoom. Same thing for my right MFCD. I'm just going to turn on the targeting and we'll go through all of this later. But to set this as soy, I do Really right long command. Green box around the outside shows that this is selected and I get a confirmation with the not soy. Now my slew controls will move around the targeting pod seeker and DMS up and down so changing waypoints changes the optical zoom. And then for our fourth controller the head mounted display to activate that I now push Coolie down short. We can see a new asterisk has appeared, and that's telling us that the head mounted display is now soy. If I move my TDC around now, we can see that I'm now moving around a ground stabilized designator on the head mounted display. To return the HUD to soy, I press Coolie short up. So one thing that is a bit confusing here, especially to a new uh, pilot, is that to make the two MFCDs soy, you need to use long commands. The short command versions will cycle through the functions on those displays. However, to select the HUD, it's a short command, short up. And equally, the head mounted display is short down. And the A10C2 long up uh, quickly opens your message screen. Uh, long down is a quick look at your DSMS so you can quickly check weapon availability. So slightly different. And this is different between the A10C2 module and the A10 legacy module. And that in the legacy module there is no head mounted display and so that is no need for a coolie down um, short press. Instead, uh, coolie down short uh, will flip your two MFCDs around. And so that's all a bit of uh, theory. We will certainly look into this in a lot more detail with examples for each kind of weapon and how we can use these various systems together in order to employ our weapons. It is certainly going to take uh, practice um, still, after putting in many, many hours into this module, 90% of the mistakes I make are from having the wrong thing set as soy. So it is always a good idea to quickly check what you do have active, what you don't have active, and just look out. If you're looking at a screen and you expect it to be responding, do check for that green outline to it. Anyway, that's all for this sort of getting the boring bits out of the way introduction should now have everything you need to move on to uh, future modules and I'll just be going through the various weapon systems and seeing how we can employ them. If you have any questions leave them down below otherwise thank you for watching. Cheers!